First thing the American soldiers see is gold, literally tons of gold. During a battle in New Guinea in 1942, Ladner was killed at just the age of 30. Several strange sightings and incidents were quite prevalent, with pilots and other people during the Second World War. Being one of the deadliest battles in history, World War II has always attracted curiosity due to its variety of mysteries and puzzling occurrences. The pilots often described these objects were sort of fuzzy, Lights. In the years since, many of these strange incidents have been explained, providing insight into some of the most compelling aspects of the wartime period. In this video, we will look at 10 of the most famous mysteries from World War II that have eventually been solved. Number 10. Amber Room the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union during World War II was about more than just gaining territory. It was also about stealing important cultural assets. Among these was the Amber Room, dubbed the Eighth Wonder of the World, for its stunning beauty and historical significance. Andreas Schluter and Gottfried Wolfram built the Amber Room in the 18th century, and it was a work of art embellished with amber panels, gold leaf, and valuable stones. It covered around 180 square feet and weighed more than six tons, and it represented richness and artistic mastery. As the conflict progressed, the fate of the Amber Room took a terrible turn. The invading German forces dismantled it and took it to Königsberg, now Kaliningrad, where it was briefly shown before vanishing without a trace. This disappearance sparked one of World War II's most enduring mysteries, perplexing historians and treasure hunters for decades thereafter. The robbery of the Amber Room was only one chapter in the greater story of Nazi art looting. Hitler's army took an estimated 600,000 artworks from around Europe with a total value of billions of pounds. Among this widespread theft, the Amber Room stood out as one of the most valuable and culturally significant things taken by the Nazis. The Amber Room was built over several years in the early 18th century, beginning in Berlin's Charlottenburg Palace, where Schluter envisioned embellishing the walls with beautiful amber panels. Schluter pioneered new procedures for working with amber, resulting in a masterwork that astounded everybody who saw it. The salon eventually made its way to Russia as a gift from the Prussian monarch to the Russian Tsar and was housed in Pushkin's Catherine Palace. The Amber Room was a prized possession of the Russian Empire, enduring political upheavals and revolutions. However, its fate took a fatal turn during World War II when the advancing German army captured it and carried it westward. Despite efforts to disguise its position, the room fell into Nazi hands and was moved to Königsberg Castle. As Allied forces moved in and bombardment increased, the fate of the Amber Room grew more dubious. Some claim it was destroyed during the Königsberg bombardment, while others say it was concealed or surreptitiously relocated elsewhere. The truth is still obscure, buried in mystery and intrigue. Numerous ideas and rumors have evolved over the years, driving the ongoing investigation of the Amber Room's disappearance. From allegations of sinking in a shipwreck to being hidden in underground tunnels, each hypothesis sheds light on the persistent fascination with this lost treasure. Despite many studies and searches, including dives to identify sunken boats and explorations of underground passages, the Amber Room's location remains unknown. The only tangible evidence of its existence are replicas and historical records, which serve as reminders of its lasting significance and the ongoing effort to answer one of history's biggest mysteries. Number 9. Battle of Los Angeles the Battle of Los Angeles was an unusual incident that occurred on February 25, 1942, during World War II. Tensions in the United States were high just a few months after the Pearl Harbor attack. On the night of February 23, a Japanese submarine attacked an oil facility near Santa Barbara, raising concerns about a possible invasion of the West Coast. This increased concern laid the groundwork for what became known as the Battle of Los Angeles. At approximately 2 a.m. on February 25, U.S. Army radar discovered mysterious objects around 120 miles off the coast of Los Angeles. Military authorities quickly issued a full-scale warning, triggering air raid sirens and a citywide blackout. The unexpected blaring of sirens disturbed the night silence, forcing hundreds of thousands of locals to crowd the streets, defying blackout restrictions, to see the unfolding events. As the night passed, reports claimed that the mystery objects had gotten closer, hovering off the coast of Santa Monica. Anti-aircraft troops were authorized to fire, and at 3 a.m., the night sky over Los Angeles erupted in gunfire. Anti-aircraft units in Santa Monica were the first to fire, 
followed by units around the Los Angeles area, unleashing a barrage of orange tracer shells and searchlights into the darkness. During the turmoil, locals and military personnel reported seeing enemy planes, raining bombs, and even Japanese paratroopers. Conflicting accounts surfaced, including claims of a downed Japanese plane in Hollywood and sightings of enemy ships offshore. The situation worsened as the barrage of anti-aircraft fire lasted more than an hour, causing building damage and tragic incidents on the ground. However, as daylight broke, the perceived enemy threat vanished without a trace. There were no Japanese ships or planes detected, nor was there any sign of hostile bombardment or invasion. Following the tragedy, bewilderment and shame hung over the authorities, who tried to provide a convincing account of the night's occurrences. Initially, U.S. Secretary of the Navy Frank Knox blamed the event on mistaken identity and admitted it was a false alarm. However, U.S. Secretary of War Henry Stimson refuted this theory, asserting that enemy aircraft were really present above Los Angeles. Stimson then walked back his claims, adding to the intrigue surrounding the Battle of Los Angeles. Numerous explanations have evolved to explain the events of that fatal night, ranging from a false alarm caused by anxiety to sightings of weather balloons or even unidentified flying objects. Despite official studies, including a 1983 report by the Office of Air Force History, no definitive conclusion has been established about the incident's cause. The Battle of Los Angeles remains a perplexing enigma, representing the only serious military action to occur over a continental United States metropolitan area during World War II. Decades later, the event continues to captivate the imagination of historians, conspiracy theorists, and UFO enthusiasts alike, ensuring its place as one of the greatest unsolved mysteries from World War II. Number 8. The Ghost Train the Nazi ghost train has become a famous narrative associated with the closing chapters of World War II. As the struggle in Europe came to a close, rumors circulated about buried Nazi treasures, with the ghost train being one of the most notorious examples. This famous train was claimed to be loaded with enormous wealth, including money, diamonds, and precious artwork, causing excitement and intrigue, especially in Poland, where the tale is strongly ingrained. According to local legend, the ghost train vanished into the vast underground railway network built by the Nazis during the war. Despite countless claims and intermittent fines over the years, conclusive proof of its existence has been elusive. Some believe that if the train existed, it was either destroyed or dismantled by fleeing Nazi leaders as Allied forces advanced. One of the most notable claims about the ghost train came in 2015, when treasure hunters stated that they had discovered the elusive train in Poland. According to legend, the train vanished into a mountain tunnel as the Red Army closed in, carrying seized goods from Breslau, now Rocklaw in Poland. The hunters requested a reward of 10% of the treasure, posing a slew of legal and logistical hurdles for authorities. Skepticism greeted the allegation, with doubts expressed about the train's existence due to a lack of tangible evidence and past search failures. Despite these reservations, the fascination of the ghost train remained, attracting the public's imagination and generating speculation about its whereabouts. The setting of World War II contributed to the mystery surrounding the ghost train. The Nazis routinely utilized trains to bring seized goods back to Berlin as Allied and Soviet armies closed in on the German capital. This historical context gave validity to the idea that such a train could exist, hidden amid the convoluted tunnels of the Nazi underground network. Nonetheless, the Nazi ghost train mystery has remained unexplained, left to mythology and speculation. While treasure seekers continue their search for riches, the ghost train's fate may never be known for certain. Instead, it remains one of World War II's most enduring mysteries. Despite the passage of time, the fascination with uncovering buried treasures of the past continues, perpetuating the mystique of the Nazi ghost train for future generations. Number 7. Rommel's Gold during World War II, amid the chaos and carnage, rumors emerged about Nazis looting artifacts from all around Europe. Among these tales is the intriguing legend of Rommel's gold, a trove of riches allegedly recovered by the German Africa Corps under the command of the famed General Erwin Rommel. This treasure hoard, worth billions of euros, is alleged to have been hidden away by Rommel himself probably in the vast expanses of the North African deserts prior to the German retreat in 1943. Despite numerous attempts to locate it, the exact location of Rommel's gold has remained unknown, shrouded in mystery and supposition. 
Some speculate that the treasure is buried beneath the shifting sands of North Africa, while others believe it was whisked away to hidden vaults in Germany and Argentina. However, there is also the tantalizing possibility that Rommel's gold never existed at all, and was actually a hoax spread by Rommel to confuse Allied soldiers. The legend of Rommel's gold gained popularity after accounts of the German conquest of Tunisia in 1943, during which Rommel's forces supposedly robbed an astounding 20 million pounds in gold and priceless artifacts from Jewish populations on the island of Jerba. However, Rommel's direct role in this alleged plunder remains unknown, obfuscated by the fog of war and contradicting witnesses. According to folklore, the ill-fated journey of Rommel's gold was supposed to conclude with its passage to Corsica, but catastrophe struck when the vessel ferrying the treasure allegedly sank its route from Corsica to Germany. This story of maritime disaster has since caught the imagination of both real-life treasure hunters and fictional tales, immortalized in works like Ian Fleming's James Bond novel On Her Majesty's Secret Service. One of the more intriguing tales of Rommel's gold One row after the other bags with gold coins and from here onwards with, filled with gold bars to the end of the room comes from the story of Peter Flagg, an engineer and diver who claims to have served under Rommel's leadership. Flagg described receiving clandestine orders to carry the treasure from Corsica to Germany, but their intentions were foiled by Allied air dominance and guerrilla opposition. In a desperate attempt to protect the wealth, Rommel's soldiers allegedly secretly dumped the gold on the seabed off the coast of Corsica, planning to collect it once the war was over. Despite frantic attempts to locate it, including mysterious locations discovered on the back of an SS officer's portrait, Rommel's gold has remained stubbornly out of reach. Investigators are concerned that the steel canisters carrying the treasure may have succumbed to rust and rot after decades submerged beneath the waters, making rescue difficult without a coordinated salvage operation. The enigma of Rommel's gold remains a heartbreaking reminder of the plunder and intrigue that defined World War II, inviting treasure hunters and historians alike to solve its puzzles. Whether Rommel's gold is a genuine hoard of wartime riches or a fiction of collective imagination. Its legacy lives on as one of the war's most lasting mysteries, casting a long shadow over history and prompting speculation for future generations. Number 6. The Strange Life of Rudolf Hess Few events in human history have left such an indelible impression as World War II, which produced stories of heroism, tragedy, and intrigue that continue to captivate our imaginations today. Among the many mysteries of this age, perhaps none are as long-lasting as those surrounding the intriguing character of Rudolf Hess. On May 10, 1941, in the midst of World War II, Rudolf Hess, a high-ranking Nazi official and deputy to the Führer, embarked on a daring fly to Scotland in a Messerschmitt Bf 110, evading British air defenses before crash landing and being arrested by a farmer. Hess's claimed mission goal was to negotiate a peace treaty between Germany and Britain, anticipating the catastrophic repercussions of a prolonged struggle between Germany, Britain, and Russia. However, the exact motivations behind Hess's flight remain unknown. Some assume that he acted alone, motivated by a misguided conviction in his ability to mediate peace. Others believe his expedition was planned by Hitler himself, who wanted to test Britain's resolve to negotiate a separate peace. Regardless of the underlying motivation for his acts, the daring of Hess's trip captivated the world's attention and prompted a frenzy of inquiry and conspiracy theories that continue to this day. Hess's detention by British police signaled the start of a new chapter in his life, one fraught with mystery and ambiguity. Despite his promises to seek peace, he was treated as a prisoner of war rather than a diplomat, and was imprisoned in a variety of locales, including the Tower of London and Spandau Prison in Berlin. During his detention, Hess's mental health deteriorated, resulting in spells of amnesia and serious mental disease. This decrease further fueled speculation about his genuine goals and the circumstances of his flight. Throughout the years, several theories have evolved in an effort to solve the enigma of Hess's departure. Some believe he acted on his own initiative, motivated by a misplaced sense of duty or a desire for personal glory. Others argue that he was duped by Hitler or other high-ranking Nazi officials who regarded his mission as a chance to test Britain's resolve and gain a strategic edge in the conflict. Despite numerous theories, the exact motivations behind Hess's flight remain unknown, buried beneath layers of speculation and intrigue. In the decades since the end of World War II, scholars and historians have continued to dive into Rudolf Hess's enigma, 
seeking solutions to the many unanswered issues. While certain records have thrown insight into his mindset throughout his trip, especially his belief in spiritual forces driving his actions, many questions remain unanswered. Theories about British involvement in Hesse's mission have been proposed, but conclusive evidence is missing. Finally, the story of Rudolf Hess and his mysterious flight to Scotland stands as a testament to the enduring intrigue. Whether driven by ideology, delusion, or clandestine machinations, Hess's enigmatic journey continues to captivate and confound historians and conspiracy theorists alike, ensuring that his name will remain synonymous with one of the 20th century's greatest mysteries. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. Last year, another World War II mystery was finally solved after 80 years, as haunting footage revealed a wreck of a vanished submarine. Investigators from World War II have solved one of the conflict's most perplexing mysteries following the discovery of an Allied submarine in Japan. Researchers have discovered the last resting site of the USS Albacore, a U.S. Navy cruiser credited with killing at least 10 enemy ships during her service before disappearing just months before the war ended. The finding has provided relatives of the deceased with final closure, as the fate of their loved ones had previously remained unknown. The Albacore was regarded among the most successful submarines by the U.S. Navy during World War II. Therefore, its disappearance on October 28, 1944, during a routine refueling stop near Midway, caused even more shock. Following pictures provided by University of Tokyo scholar Tamaki Ura, the Naval History and Heritage Command identified the wreck's ultimate resting site on the Japanese island of Hokkaido. A remotely operated vehicle obtained photographs of the wreck 237 meters below and identified a torpedo tube, tower, hatch, periscope, and antenna. The NHHC identified the wreck as the albacore based on the SJ radar dish and mast, a row of vent holes on top of the superstructure, and the lack of steel plates around the upper edge of the fairwater. According to the discoveries, family members of crew members aboard the sub when it went missing can now find closure for their long-lost loved ones. Alan Hudgens, who was only 19 years old at the time, was one of 86 crew members killed when the ship went down. Lisa Hume Lutman, his great-grandniece, said her heart jumped when she learned the submarine had been recovered. Miss Lutman, 60, claimed her family suspected he was hit by an explosive, but they were never given a definitive cause of death. According to Dr. Yura, Japanese sources from 1944 confirmed the sub's demise, indicating that it hit mines on November 7th of that year. He said, it is through their hard work and continued collaboration that we could confirm Albacore's identity after being lost at sea for over 70 years. Number 5. Flight 19 Flight 19 is one of the most lasting mysteries of World War II, a story that continues to grab the imagination with its mix of intrigue, tragedy, and the unknown. On December 5, 1945, five TBM Avenger torpedo bombers, headed by Lt. Charles Taylor, flew from the United States. A regular overwater navigational training flight was conducted from the Naval Air Station in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Little did they know that it would be their final adventure. Known as Journey 19, it was supposed to be a simple training exercise, but it quickly devolved into the bizarre. Shortly after takeoff, Taylor reported that his compasses were malfunctioning, leaving him disoriented and unsure of his location. Taylor's uncertainty worsened as the flight progressed, and despite efforts by other pilots and radio operators to assist him, Flight 19 became lost over the enormous length of the Atlantic Ocean. As night fell and the weather deteriorated, the situation became more grave. With gasoline running low and no sign of land or a path home, Taylor and his crew had to make a difficult decision. In a scary final radio broadcast, Taylor stated his decision to abandon the planes unless they saw land shortly. The disappearance of Flight 19 shocked both the military and the public. How could five fully equipped aircraft go without a trace? The Navy started a massive search and rescue operation, exploring hundreds of thousands of square miles miles of ocean in an attempt to uncover any trace of the missing aircraft or crew. Despite their greatest attempts, no wreckage was ever located, and Flight 19's fate remained a mystery. Over the years, numerous ideas have evolved to explain the disappearance. Some ascribe it to natural causes, such as navigational errors, mechanical breakdowns, or inclement weather. Others suggest darker causes, such as alien abduction, government conspiracy, or even the famous Bermuda Triangle. 
The Bermuda Triangle, a loosely defined area in the western North Atlantic Ocean, has long been associated with mysterious disappearances of ships and aircraft. Some believe Flight 19 was downed by the Triangle's claimed mystery energies, which include magnetic anomalies, rogue waves, and perhaps extraterrestrial activity. However, despite the attractiveness of these speculations, Flight's true fate remains unknown. The disappearance of the five planes, as well as the PBM-5 Mariner assigned to find them, is one of aviation history's great unsolved mysteries. Number 4. The Blood Banner The Blood Banner, also known as the Blutfahne, tells a compelling story about the rise and collapse of the Nazi government. It originated from the infamous 1923 Beer Hall Putsch in Munich and was revered within the Nazi party for its involvement in the bloodshed during the coup attempt. The flag, soaked with the blood of those who died during the revolt, immediately became a symbol of martyrdom and perseverance for the revolution. The Blutfahne, a prized artifact, was meticulously preserved and given to key figures in the Nazi hierarchy. Joseph Berchtold, the SS's leader, was one of the first to receive the flag during the party's early rise to power. Later, SS Sturmbannführer Jakob Grimminger took on the job of official flag bearer, tasked with protecting the blood banner until the end of the war. Throughout the Nazi era, the Blutfahne was a key component in official ceremonies and large spectacles, serving as a powerful emblem of Nazi ideology and superiority. It was widely displayed during Reichspartetag, the party's annual convention, and other important events, emphasizing the cult-like devotion to the Nazi government. During the chaos of World War II, efforts were made to preserve the Blutfahne from Allied airstrikes and possible plunder. The flag was moved to several protected sites to ensure its survival amidst the carnage of war. However, when the fight ends, the fate of the blood banner becomes undetermined, cloaked in intrigue and mystery. There are numerous explanations regarding Blutfana's disappearance. Some claim that it was secretly stolen by American forces as a battle trophy, while others believe it came into the hands of the Russian army as spoils of war. There are even speculations that it was intentionally destroyed by fleeing Nazis to avoid capture by Allied forces. Despite persistent efforts by Allied governments to discover the blood banner after the war, its whereabouts are unclear to this day. The mysterious disappearance of such a valuable relic adds another element of mystery to Nazi Germany's turbulent history, leading historians and enthusiasts alike to speculate on its final destiny. Blutfana's legacy continues to enthrall and frighten, acting as a powerful reminder of the tragic period in human history known as the Nazi rule. Its removal symbolizes the eventual defeat of Nazi ideology and the victory of justice over oppression. Nonetheless, the enigma surrounding its fate lingers, casting doubt on one of World War II's greatest mysteries. Number 3. The Deadly Double the Deadly Double is a fascinating story that arose on the eve of World War II, leaving a trail of suspicion and intrigue in its wake. It all started with two intriguing adverts published in the New Yorker magazine just weeks before the horrific Pearl Harbor attack. With their enigmatic language and sinister graphics, these advertisements for The Deadly Double, an apparently benign dice game, piqued readers' interest. One advertisement showed a set of dice emblazoned with weird numbers, 0, 5, 7, XX, 24, and 12. Warnings in numerous languages. Achtung, warning, alerte, heightened the sense of doom. The other advertisement showed people cowering in a bunker, implying that the game was necessary for air attack survival. The advertisements, which featured a Germanic double eagle as their emblem, generated both intrigue and worry. As the country dealt with the wake of the Pearl Harbor assault, speculation regarding the true meaning of the deadly double advertisements began to spread. Some claimed they included coded signals designed to warn enemy operators in the United States of the coming attack. The numbers on the dice, 12 and 7 for the date of the attack, 5 and 0 for the time, appeared to match the events of December 7, 1941. The title, The Deadly Double, was understood to refer to Germany's and Japan's simultaneous dangers. Despite these tantalizing hypotheses, the truth of the Deadly Double ads remained unknown. Investigators tracked them down to a gaming firm in Chicago that made a legitimate dice game with the same name. While the timing of the advertisements was undoubtedly strange, authorities concluded that it was simply an odd coincidence. 
The FBI, already swamped with other wartime investigations, was unable to devote more resources to solving the riddle. In the years that followed, the deadly double advertising slipped into obscurity, overshadowed by the broader events of World War II. Yet their memory survived as one of the war's great unanswered mysteries. Was it simply a matter of weird timing and unfortunate chance? Or did the advertisements disguise a deeper, more ominous message? The truth may never be revealed, yet the enigma of the deadly double continues to captivate minds and stir discussion even today. Number 2. An Enigma Machine During World War II, one of the Allies' most difficult tasks was to unlock the German Enigma system. This technology, similar to a very advanced typewriter, scrambled messages into seemingly incomprehensible code. German forces thought their transmissions were secure, but they had no idea that a crew of determined codebreakers would reveal their secrets and alter the direction of the war. The Enigma narrative began in the 1920s when the German military used the system for encrypted communication. It functioned by scrambling letters with rotating wheels and electrical circuits, resulting in complicated codes that appeared impossible to decode. To crack the code, codebreakers were required to know the exact settings of these wheels, which changed frequently. The Polish Cipher Bureau made the first significant breakthrough in deciphering the Enigma code. From 1933 to 1938, they successfully decoded messages by reassembling an Enigma machine and collaborating with German engineers. Sensing an impending German invasion, the Poles revealed their findings to the British shortly before the commencement of World War II in 1939. The British built the government code and cipher school at Bletchley Park, where mathematicians, intelligence professionals, and early computers worked to solve the Enigma code. Despite the arduous task ahead, these codebreakers were resolved to discover the secrets concealed within the encrypted communications. While the Germans thought their Enigma signals were unbreakable, codebreakers at Bletchley Park began to make substantial headway. By 1941, they had intercepted letters detailing German intentions in Greece and naval strategy in North Africa, providing the Allies a decisive advantage in the fight. However, the Allies were not the only ones involved in code-breaking. The Germans had some triumphs too, particularly in the early stages of the Battle of the Atlantic. They successfully decoded Allied naval communications, allowing them to target convoys and inflict havoc with their U-boats. Despite these obstacles, the code-breakers at Bletchley Park persisted in their work, they were constantly faced with the challenge of how to use the information they obtained without alerting the Germans to the fact that their codes had been compromised. Despite these obstacles, Bletchley Park played an important part in defeating the Axis forces. The turning moment came in December 1942, when the British ultimately broke the upgraded Enigma code, known as SHARP. With this breakthrough, the Allies acquired even more insight into German plans and movements, tipping the scales in their favor. In the end, the combined efforts of codebreakers on both sides determined the result of the war. The Enigma machine, previously thought unbreakable, was eventually decrypted, demonstrating that no secret is truly safe from determined minds. Number 1. Unit 731 Unit 731, a covert unit created by the Japanese Army, was responsible for horrible crimes, including torturous experimentation on hundreds of detainees. It is still one of the most unsettling mysteries of World War II. Its atrocities, ranging from vivisections without anesthesia to deliberate disease infection, are beyond conception. For decades after the war, the truth about Unit 731 was kept secret. Records were suppressed, memories questioned, and reports disputed. Even now, only historians and scholars know the full scope of the unit's deeds. However, fresh archaeological finds have thrown light on this dark period of history. Chinese archaeologists discovered an underground facility near the city of Anda, which is thought to be the elusive Unit 731 bunker. The bunker's layout, with its convoluted network of rooms and tunnels, matches historical descriptions of the unit's testing facility. It was founded before the onset of World War II, with the mission of testing, producing, and storing biological weapons. The squad, led by General Shiro Ishii, violated international conventions by conducting gruesome experiments on detainees. Unit 731's tests were cruel. Prisoners were subjected to vivisections, illness injections, amputations, hunger, and cold conditions. The misery inflicted on these people was indescribable, and none of them survived the atrocities they faced. The atrocities of the unit extended beyond the bunker, 
The Japanese tested biological weapons on Chinese citizens, killing hundreds of thousands, if not more. Plague-infected fleas were produced and airdropped on Chinese cities, resulting in extensive devastation and death. Following the war, the United States offered protection to Ishii and many of his accomplices in exchange for access to the unit's findings. This decision kept the truth about the unit's misdeeds from the public for years, adding to the lingering mystery surrounding its operations. Today, efforts to uncover the truth about the unit continue, motivated by the need to honor the victims and bring those responsible accountable. However, problems remain, especially in light of political tensions between Japan and China. Despite these challenges, the significance of recalling the horrors done by the unit cannot be understated. The museum in Harbin is a mournful memorial to the victims and a harsh reminder of the depths of human depravity. As historians work to uncover the truth and encourage reconciliation, the unit's memory stands as a strong reminder of the importance of peace, understanding, and justice in a war-torn globe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.